Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Bring It On. Let's head to the terrace. Rise to the top or get left in the dust. That's a pretty cool view. You can see one of the sons of Kimura back there too. Was that supposed to be a challenge? Always keep your eye on the price. You see a number of containers of some sort beyond the enclosure. The Emperor favors me today. Armor of Despair. All enemies in combat suffer minus 10 weapon skill and ballistic skill. Just across the entire field? That seems pretty good. A base armor property plus 15 armor against human enemies. Avenger Tactical Gauntlets. Whenever the wearer is able to perform an attack of opportunity, they gain plus one stack of vengeance. The wearer's attacks of opportunity deal additional damage. Peripheral Control Monocle. Using a non-attack ability grants the wearer a plus 5% bonus to dodge and parry for each enemy adjacent to the wearer for one round. This effect stacks. I don't know that he needs more parry. But he is the tank, so... I'm gonna stick with this. She has a better Lore Imperium anyway, so I think we can swap this out. And do that instead. And while I'm thinking about it, I need to swap back to his other helmet. He does tend to one-shot enemies quite often, so I think this is better. And it looks much cooler. Is there money to be made? Now the burn effect and the flamer could crit. I could see leaving the other helmet on her, but Keep I don't think that it can. Because I haven't seen it happen, I don't think. Cautious pilot. The two pilots are already disarmed and shackled. They give you a haunted look as you approach them. Do not dare to say anything. You take a glance at the Xenos boat. Sure, its design and certain parts appear bizarre. You can still guess their purpose. You could probably steer it. Well, in that case, kill them both. You are surplus to requirements. No, wait. We will co-op... I'm done dealing with Xenos. Let us not dawdle. Alright, to the Reaving Tempest Spire. The dim light sources of Kimura glow like swamp lights. Making you dizzy and nauseous. I always have a backup plan. The gargantuan spire is too large to see in its entirety. Its true proportions are shrouded in shadows. You feel as if those shadows try to envelop and swallow you whenever you look away. 
Grinning savagely, Ofar says with undisguised joy, I smell blood in the air, blood that is about to be spilt. I hear the echo of clashing swords and the terrified screams of Xenos writhing under our heel. All Father, what a marvelous feast you prepared for me. By the Golden Throne we made it, and all in one piece. Not bad, but we can't relax just yet. We've still got a long way to go. The Spire of the Reaving Tempest, the seat of my Cabal, with a place to find respite from the scheming of our enemies and a deadly trap for those too weak and soft for our ranks. Merzai tilts his head and glances at you. The heart of the Spire contains a secret, an ancient webway gate that has remained sealed for many, many aeons. Remoris kept it in case Vex news happened to tighten around the Cabal's neck. No one save for her and a certain other Cabalite knows where exactly in real space the gate leads. A perfect escape route, and I can open it for you. How do you know how to unseal the gate? I find such deep trust between two Jukari to be, are too good to be true. Trust? How unreliable. No, I simply abducted and tortured the Cabalite who is privy to the secret. There's even a chance that Eremaris believed the story about the pathetic weakling running off. I do not trust you. It must be a trap intended to secure a pardon for yourself. Bah. The Cabalite lets out a grim laugh. It'll take more than your hide for Eremaris to accept me back. Still, have it your way. It'll provide me with a great deal of amusement watch you scurry about in search of different escape of a different escape out of Kimura. I have a Marajai stops, searching for the right word. A desire. Before we leave the spire, there is something I want to pick up. Something memorable. I left it in the Cabal's abode. I do not want it to fall into the hands of others when carrion eaters and looters flood the spire after we are gone. There could be something in it for you. He lets the last words hang in the air. Fine. Just point out where this property of yours is. Of course. First, we need to find my raider. Most likely, at the end of the dock outside the spire. Let's go to the end of this terrace before we enter the spire. Marijai, what should we expect to find inside the spire? Cabalites, witches, incubi, at Eremaris' aside. He pauses for a moment, an expression of concern flashing across his pale features. That is all. The venture into the depths of the spire. The spire of the Reaving Tempest welcomes you with muffled noises seeping from its dark walls. Distant voices, footsteps, and screams of pain. Let's grab him real quick for his quest this way. Come back for Heinrichs. Alright, poise to strike. The assassin makes an enemy suffer percent armor and deflection until the end of the assassin's turn. Based off perception and intelligence, an agility bonus for armor. If there's only one enemy adjacent to them, the assassin also gains percent dodge until the assassin's next turn. If there are no enemies adjacent to the assassin, they gain percent dodge reduction until their next turn. And strength. Now let's do agility instead. Oh, let's give him that armor we found too. That looks pretty cool. Rise to the top or get left in the dust. The vast towers of Kimura spring up out of the darkness surrounding the spire at insane angles, violating all the laws of physics and perspective. Pay attention. Take your time. Merzai lightly leaps from the edge of the platform into the raider and begins inspecting it from the inside. 
Hear clicking and hissing as the Jakari opens and closes various hidden caches and the Skycraft's hole, accompanied by muttered Zeno's cursing. After a minute, Rajai bolts upright and freezes, clearly wrestling with his own irritation. A moment later, he cranes his neck to look down into the abyss beneath his feet. Come here, Donald. Take a look at this view. A stray suggestion. Why would I want to do that? Marajai gives you an, enig an enigmatic look. I hate saying an enigmatic. A smile slowly creeping across on his face. Tomorrow is the greatest thing ever created by an intelligent race. Surely you wish to see it as it is meant to be seen. To behold it in all its magnificent detail. I do not trust you. His dark eyes narrow to slits. I do not need your trust, Donald. I'm offering you a chance to learn something new. Walk over to Mary's eye and look down. This is not in character, but I'm curious. The chasm yawns endlessly below. Cyclopean spires of Kamora piercing upward out of the gloom. The details of these vast structures are hidden by the hazy gloaming. Uh, the many lights on the spire's terraces, which resemble marsh gas, are all that bring color to this bleak and awe-inspiring vista. The tiring height takes your breath away, and you almost swoon, then a gentle shove at your back makes you lose your balance. The moment stretched into an eternity. Your firm footing is swept out from under you. Your heart stops beating entirely. The chasm below seems to rush up toward you, ready to swallow you whole and the clawed fingers close around your wrist, halting your fall, while holding you suspended over the abyss. Merzai's laughter rings with dark delight when he finally tugs you back into the raider. Terror. Unbridled, exquisite terror. Or more bite to it than the stale, predictable pain of torture victims. That burn in your chest, that tang in your mouth, and you feel the blood roaring in your veins, your heart battering out a march of triumph. Life becomes more vivid when death can come at any moment, Donald. I'll continue to remind you of that. Without giving you a chance to respond, Merjai steps over the side of the raider and returns to the platform. The Tempest Cabalites have already picked the raider clean. That means that what I seek must be hidden somewhere in the spire. I think... I think it's in the torture chamber. Once inside, we must proceed through the first chambers directly ahead and turn left, then left again. Come. I intend to claim what is mine. I always keep my options open. We should keep Marajai on our party for this part. But I think having an Inquisitor of the Ordo Xenos in our party would also be a good idea. So... Who to get rid of? Keep your wits about you. I wonder if we can do Mary Jai's quest without him in the party. We could have Jai sit it out. We'll do it this way. If we can't do his quest, so it's not dawdle. I meant to do uh, formation. I always have a backup plan. It seems a sinister device can be disabled if one can get past it. Oh, Pain ow. and duty go hand in hand. Son of a gun. Stop 
hitting me, Ashmug. You bite like a pop. All right, not doing so hot here. <laughs> I owe you a debt. This wound will make a fine scar. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. Only a pain won't stop me. The Inquisition taught me many things. Sometimes you consult the appropriate treaties on Tactica Imperialis and weigh every step. Some no Medicae needed. Just give me some milk. Ah, I won't forget this. Speak, Ed Fatter. Let me help. Ah, I owe you a debt. Ah. I won't forget this. There we go. All right, finally got it to work. Pay attention. It's I cannot there. shake the dire feeling that we were allowed to escape. That nocturne could hardly have pulled off its prank in the heart of Camorra without sanction from somewhere on high. Another reason to find a way out of here and never set foot in these dark streets again. I have no interest in getting caught up in Xenos schemes. Me neither. There. Always keep your eye on the price. All right, platforms connected. Let's circle back. What is that? Let's carry this real quick, then we'll circle back around. The Sinister Labyrinth looks like a death trap. It was probably created for uh, just such a purpose. Keep your wits about you. Duty prevails. Is there money to be made? This could be an opportunity. I always keep my options open. Desolation Blast Pistol. Every hit from this pistol inflicts plus one stack of melting. Sharpshooter Rifle. Then I shots fired by this rifle deal an additional plus five damage to larger enemies. Looks a little unwieldy. <laughs>
Muffled cries of pain come from the impenetrable darkness. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. And done. The corpse was dismembered and then reassembled, apparently while still alive. Numerous stitches and burns indicate that the surgeon was not concerned with humane treatment. You don't say. The view of the intertwining and intricate passages of the labyrinth fascinates and draws the eye. I always have a backup plan. So that's the main hall. We don't want to go there yet. We want to go to the torture chamber, ideally. Back this way. I think. And I thought he said it was to the left and left again. Which would put it... Somewhere on this side of the map. Is there money to be made? The trap on that side. Look, no. I've friend. seen a lot of innocent people. I've yet to see someone remain so after an interrogation. I serve the Golden Throne. I always keep my options open. See? Right there! What a shame. Judging by the marks on its body, it's unfortunate Xenos was sewn together from several individuals of the same species, and then ripped three modified Odari hearts out of its own chest. Oh, research report. The thick stacks of pages made of a strange material has been hastily tied with a coarse piece of string. The pages are covered in sharp, uneven handwriting and have brown stains on them. Goal. Several fold increase in veil energy. Note. Enhancing the veil connection will require merging the minds of, our four, of four specimens. Note. Four individuals, two male and two female, selected from among Kruderak Farseers. Aside from their veil connection, the specimens have no common traits. Merging process expected to be fascinatingly painful. Stage 1. Parts of three Aldari placed inside the thorax of the fourth, the most resilient among them. Redundant original heart removed. Other internal organs preserved. Specimens conscious throughout the surgeries. Stage 2. Despite the blockers, the partial brain transplants were accompanied by several energy discharges, resulting in equipment damage. The potential was amazing. The integrated subject was punished by an intramuscular injection of an acidic solution that erodes soft tissue from the inside. Stage 3. Subject stable and controllable, undergoing significant physical and psycho-emotional distress as the Eldari minds are becoming aware of the situation. The energy discharges increase every time the blockers are eased or pain receptors are directly stimulated, confirming the expected result. In order to intensi intensify the pain experienced, the subject will be nourished by essences of its own torture. Stage 4 The Eldari consciousnesses are trying to consume one another, perhaps in order to lower the net pain awareness. Curious. The subject must continue to be saturated with its autogenic agony, with added psychotranquilizer injections. Note. Enhance the subject's physical suffering with internal bone tissue disintegration. After that, the notes become indecipherable. We are the spearhead of the Imperium. I needed that.
The energy of a thousand tortured souls permeates the spire. I can feel their fury and thirst for vengeance, and their helplessness. There is fairly strong psychic activity coming from those pieces. I would not recommend touching them. There is no telling what manner of trap may have been set here by someone as insane as a Jukari homunculus. A frozen and elegant poses on the intricate game board are figurines of Jukari and Asurani, carved with great skill from Onyx and Wraithbone. Oh, that must be the what marriage I wanted. That was a problem for you. Recoil war boots. Whenever the wearer attacks an enemy behind cover with a range attack, cover efficiency is decreased by 40% for that attack, minus 15 recoil. Gloves of Rapid Desolation. Increases the rate of fire of the wearer's weapon by plus one. Each time an enemy is killed, perplex is inflicted on all other enemies in a two cell radius. Always keep your eye on the prize. We have a fight up ahead. It's been a little while. Let's go back around this way first. My pleasure. Whoever's in prison inside the capsule, they're moving ever so slightly. The Farseer's body is covered in fresh wounds. Their edges are turning blue and rotting, the effect of an unknown toxin. Keep your wits about you. Homunculus's notes. Deliverance as the activation order code word. Excellent. 43. Sequential joint removal, starting with the fingers. The process resulted in death, as in every previous instance. The body will be reformed and regrown. 59. Internal organs excised and placed into an alkaline solution without severance from the nervous system. The subject is observing its dismemberment and experiencing the pain at its full intensity. The agony strengthens the connection to the veil, but the body is weak and inevitably perishes. 71. The subject's body disintegrates faster with each new assembly. Thermobox introduced into the torso for alternate cooling and heating with constant electrical stimulation. The subject survived for 4 minutes longer compared to the previous resurrection. 75. Physical torture discontinued. Audio-visual headband placed on the subject's head to broadcast images of its suffering kin into its consciousness. Cardiac arrest recorded 19 minutes later. 96. Subject in possession of all previous knowledge including memories of pain and death, and therefore fully compliant. Phenomenal strengthening of the veil connection observed, but the body survives for no longer than 3 minutes under any set of conditions. Easily done. Let us not dawdle. Let me clean up this mess real quick. Is there money to be made? Your kind has no right to exist. You dare oppose us. We do dare. I'll see to it personally. I challenge you, damn it. I will do my duty. I can do that, with the right incentive. Tell me, and it is done. Am I getting paid for this? I can do that, with the right incentive. <laughs> I 
I will bathe this battlefield in righteous fury! A tactically sound approach. It will be done. <laughs> At your beck and call. I took care of this one. Turn this favor tenfold. We all walk our own path. Oh, venomous jab. Creatures melee attack and inflict a trauma on the target. That's pretty significant. Who, if not me? Where's that frenzy I injection? Answer the call. It gives a creature Scans the ability to make three attacks per round me. and reduces damage dealt to it by 100%. I should take care of that guy. Pretty nasty buff. Doubt is for the weak. Faith without deeds is worthless. I'll do it. As the Emperor commands, I act. I am his will made manifest. Alright, standing beside an enemy, whoopsies. <laughs> and I see that guy standing there. Will attempt. I answer the call. So shall it be. None can do this better. There we go. I refuse to strike Defender. the Emperor's faithful. My strike is ruined. Isha, heal my wounds. Believe in second chances. Uh, sorry, main character. <laughs> Be 
gone. Be gone indeed. For the throne's glory. I'm done with this one. The Emperor is on our side. Let's see to it. A moving target lives longer. Tears for me, Isha. Look over there. More trouble than it's worth. Naturally. Don't get too cocky. Let's see to it. Only 40% chance gone. of hitting. But it worked. Wait, Mon Kai. Send a helping hand, and I'll show you the way home. Probably not. I Shouldn't take your word for that. Plan. Set of symbols looks unfinished. You only have half of the mysterious message in front of you. Always keep your eye on the price. What is it, rogue trader? Same description as before. The Inquisition taught me many things. Webway resonance device. A mysterious tool required to open a webway gate. I always keep my options open. The laboratory is crammed with mechanisms and devices unknown to you, inside of which makes you sick. Journal of Observations The journal entries are written in an angular but surprisingly tidy hand, with the writer deliberated meticulously over every word. The notes are supplemented by diagrams and formulae. The Farseer's mind is aggressively resisting external interference. The mind maggot perished instantly upon being introduced into the system, which has never been observed before. Interesting. As punishment, the subject was placed in vibra shackles that chip away at limb bones. Unreadable diagrams. Mind maggot enhanced with a power implant. Subject placed in a red hot metal capsule during the introduction of the parasite. Despite the pain and their parasite in its system, the subject succeeded in addressing the veil. Parasite destruction detected two minutes into its presence and the subject's body. Unreadable diagrams. Mind Maggot enhanced with poison that suppresses the host's psychic functions, and plays successfully inside its victim. The parasite's vital functions persist, yet with no sign of compliance on the part of the host. Unacceptable. Subject punished by partial skin removal and suspension by the detached areas of skin. Unreadable diagrams. Experiment finished. Result negative. For as long as the subject remains capable of combating the Mind Maggot's presence, pain is the only available method of suppression. Subject to be placed in a capsule with slowly rotating blades until further instructions. Farseers are putting up a heck of a Keep fight. Your wits about you. Wraithbone woven battle suit. Its armor restores toughness bonus divided by two wounds each round when the wearer has any numbers of the following damage over time conditions. Burning, toxin, or bleeding. And then uh, base armor property plus 10% armor against non-Drukari enemies. I'd argue that's a little better than the other armor. And we also got the Assault Cloak. The wearer gains plus 5% parry reduction and dodge reduction to their melee area attacks for each creature targeted by that area attack. Hurrah! 
I always have a backup plan. The strange capsule emits a barely perceptible buzz. Its thick walls barely contain the sounds coming from within. The sounds of a living and tormented creature. Somewhere an unseen mechanism wars to life. Eklandu. Despite his many bleeding wounds, the stately Aldari calmly straightens his shoulders and raises his narrow chin as he scrutinizes you with his keen gaze. Mysterious blue lights glimmer in his emerald green eyes. Mankai saved my life. The universe is full of cruel surprises. Who are you? You want to know my name, Mankai. Your dynasty is not known for its amiability. Indeed, we have nothing to discuss after what your kin did to my home. The Adari's thin eyebrows draw together, but as a token of my gratitude for you, your saving me, I'll satisfy your curiosity after all. I'm Eklandil Mersh, who walks the path of the Farseer, the all-seeing eye and timeless sentinel of the Craftworld Kruderok. I was, that is, until recently. I'll not ask for your name. It is as ephemeral to in this world as the morning dew that disappears by noon. Kruderok. I've heard about it from Eldari settlers on my world. So, some survived after all. The Adari's eyes are filled with hope, only for it to fade quickly. And they ended up on your world. Tell me, Mankai, what lot awaited their immortal souls and those strange lands so far from their home? Ha <laughs> I don't remember. Their fate is of no importance to me. Indeed. Mankai's years are too few for memories. The flame of your souls is extinguished by the time a brother or sister of mine has not yet fully savored their, season, their reason's youth. I've seen other Eldari here. They are all dead. Between the homunculus's tortures, I was able to glance inside my kin's desperate minds. I saw every soul that was extinguished in this spire. I sang a lament for every brother and sister sacrificed by the Dark Ones. I carry their memory in my heart. And if I get out of here alive, their names will not be forgotten. Suddenly, the Eldari recoils and points to the strange game board you took with you. What is this? Explain yourself, Monkai. What in all the gods' names made you decide to torture one of my sisters? You have to solve the Eldari Farseer that was imprisoned inside a game board by the homunculus's twisted mind. Oh, you're too stupid to realize it. Is that it? The soul of a Farseer from Kruderok is imprisoned in this object, and your every touch causes unspeakable pain to her mortal soul. How do I know you're not lying? Why would I lie to a Monkai? Your feeble intelligence lacks even the capacity to realize you have a caged soul on your hands. I have no intention to further your delusions. You're steeped in them as it is. What difference does it make? I found this board. It belongs to me now. The Adar's expression is inscrutable, but he struggles to speak. You've set me free, and I'm grateful for the rescue. But what you doing what you are doing is wrong. I can free my sister's tortured soul if you let me. Monkai, I'm asking you for one more favor. Fine, you can have it. I have set little store by your species in the past. Perhaps in some regards, I was wrong to do so. Xenos nods in gratitude, finds a spirit stone on one of the homunculus' desks and chants a few unfamiliar words which your elucidator does not catch. Dark blood pours out of the game board in the Eldari's hands. But as soon as he finishes his chant, warm glow suffuses the stone he is holding. It is done. You said you'd help me find my way home. What did you mean? The countless hours I spent in the homunculus's cage were not all spent in the throes of agony. I listened, I observed, I absorbed. And I soon learned that an old, an age-old gate built by our ancestors is hidden in the heart of the spire. A webway gate connected to the world outside. I can unseal it and forge our path to salvation. 
I can help you make your way out of the dark city and leave this place behind. But you must take me to the gate. My mind is still firm. My spirit is unbreakable. My body, on the other hand, will not soon forget pain's embrace. Tell me how to open the gate, and I shall do it myself. I do not think Amonkai can manage it. It requires the blood of the children of Assyrian, or the knowledge of the Dark Ones. Your species is too weak for such things. That does not sound particularly interesting. Why shouldn't I just kill you? Because then you will be trapped in this place forever. The gate will not yield to Amonkai's will. When the Archon servants come for you, you have no choice but to surrender and become another of the homunculus' amusing playthings. For a second, Yadari's eyes light up eerily. I've seen it in your future, Monkai. I've seen your past, too. Do not risk everything and leave your domain without a protector. That is why you're going to accept my offer. We have marriage eye, though, so... Uh, so you can get us out. Go ahead, then. I have no intention of staying in this place any longer. Then lead the way, and I'll follow in your footsteps. Is there money to be made? That's where the fog of wars come back. We should be safe to run back over here. The next time we can head to the main hall and escape with Eklandil. So I wonder if we need this guy with Marijai to escape. Maybe Marijai can't activate the webway gate by himself. But he knew about I the prisoner that could do it. Open. Well, either way, for now, I'm going to call it here next time we head to the main hall and continue our great escape. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.